Hi guys. Today we're going to do a little bit more. We're going to look at um, a couple of collar drafts uh, as well as uh, some sleeve drafts. So um, sort of new territory with the sleeve there. Um, so let's pop open Optitex and get started. So, and I'm just going to be working on this shirt, so I'm going to just get rid of these guys right now. And the first thing I want to show you is a little bit of variation on the collars we've done. So we've done, you know, pretty much a flat collar. Again, a collar that doesn't stand up, just sort of lays flat. Peter Pan collar, we've sort of done a little bit of a variation with that to make it a ruffle. Uh, but today I want to focus on uh, a mandarin collar and a two-part collar. So just to show you what I mean, let's open this up and look at some pictures. So the first collar that we're going to learn how to do is a mandarin collar. And it's actually the first step in doing a two-part collar. So easy transition. And this is what a mandarin collar looks like. It's basically just uh, this sort of band that comes around. It sort of stands right up from the collar line, or from the neckline, sorry. Um, and this is a very a basic shape for it. It's just rectangular. You can shape it a little bit differently if you like. Um, but this is your basic mandarin collar. It's very simple, it's very clean, um, and it's very easy to draft. So let's go ahead and do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, if there is a button placket, make the button placket. And this is very important because as we see in the image, let me just jump back, it goes doesn't end at the beginning or even at the center front. It goes all the way to the end of the button placket. Okay, so um, this means, of course, that we need to know how wide the button placket is going to be, where it's going to be folded back, where the edge is going to be, before we create the mandarin collar. So let's put in a button placket really quickly. Right here on the front. Okay. So um, we'll use our Extend and Parallel tool, okay? And we have to decide how wide we want our button placket. Now we've been doing a lot of one inch button plackets, so let's do a two inch button placket. A little bit wider than normal, but again, we can make any button placket the way we want. Now let's remember our formula for button placket extensions, which is the des taking the desired button placket width and timesing it by one and a half. So if we times two by one and a half, we get three, that's right. Okay, now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put in my information, just because I still wanna know where that center front is, and I want to know where it's going to be folded back. So I'm gonna add my notches. I'm going to add my notches down here first because this started to get a little bit curved so my measurements might be a little bit off there but if I base them from down here which is nice and straight be a little bit closer okay so what I need to do is I need to determine where the center front is so let's let's think about what's happening here so basically where my center front is it's not three inches in from here well it is three inches in from here okay Right, we had the uh, set, uh, center front right here, and then we extended it three inches, so of course we want three inches. And this would be my, coming in this direction, right, previous point. So there's my center front. I'm going to go ahead and use a guideline to do my second notch, again because of the larger button placket here. The, it's a little bit curved here, so I'm going to just make sure that it's right where it needs to be. Now I need to also know where it's going to be folded back. Well, it's a two inch button placket. That means I need enough to fold back to back the entire uh, placket width. So it's going to be two inches from my previous. Okay, and I'm going to draw out another guideline 
so we know where to fold it up top as well, okay? So I have a nice notch for my center front and as well as my uh, folded edge of the button placket itself, okay? So there we are. Um, I don't need to do the buttons from here to drop the collar. I just need to know that. So I'm not going to do the buttons right now. But of course, we would just apply the buttons down the center front. So what I am going to do is start to take some measurements. So we know it goes all the way around the neck from button placket edge to button placket edge. Boop, around like that. Now we're going to make it in the half, making the center back on fold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my arrow key, I'm going to select the high point shoulder here, and then work around to the edge of the button placket here, and hold shift and click there. What that will do is highlight the entire segment uh, that I'm interested in measuring. Then I'm going to come up here to design segment length, and it's going to let me know that that is a length of 5.42 inches. Okay, great. Just going to make a note of that. Now we're going to do the same thing for the back. Let's come on over here. And I'm going to click here, right on the center back neck. Hold shift, go to high point shoulder, and do the same thing. Go to design segment length, and it's going to let me know that I have a back neck length of 3.14. Now I'm going to add those two together and I'm going to get 8.56 inches, okay? And that is going to be the total length of my uh, collar stand or my mandarin collar if we just leave it as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to draft it like I drafted it before, again, um, because we want this to stand up. So this is really the difference between a flat collar and a collar that stands up. So remember before when I was talking about when you look at different seams that come together and if they're exactly the same shape, exactly the same line, they're not going to have any sort of volume or shape. Well, we saw that play out when we drafted the flat collar. When we drafted the flat collar, we copied that neckline exactly. Um, and when we do that, of course, it lays flat. It, it doesn't have really a shape or a volume. Now what we're going to do with the collar stand is it's going to be basically a rectangular piece with a few alterations. It's not going to be this curved shape. And because that line is different, the nature of how the collar falls is going to be different. It's going to stand up. It's not going to lie flat on the garment. So we're going to go to piece, new piece, create rectangular piece, and um, you can go ahead and name it your collar stand if you're going to do a two-part collar or you can just name it collar if that's the only collar you're going to have just a mandarin collar um, and we're going to type in the length that we just calculated so that 8.52 and again depending on the size of your button placket this length is going to change if you have a smaller button placket it's going to be slightly smaller if you have a larger one it's going to be slightly larger now the width is basically how much you want it to stand up. Between one and two inches is fairly standard. I'd say probably the most standard, especially for a two-piece collar, is about one and a half inches. So let me go right down the middle and do a one and a half inch height for my collar. Okay, there we have it. Now this is going to act as our sort of base piece. And we're going to make a few additions um, uh, and changes to this. So I'm going to zoom in. Now, essentially, this is pretty good. Um, it's a good start, um, but we're going to go ahead and do a couple little things. First thing I'm going to do is I need to sort of curve it. So this is nice straight line here, but we, we do want it to be a little bit curved for the neckline. I don't want too much difference. We want it to be at least easy to uh, be put into the neckline while still um, having enough difference in the, in the line shape to give you that you know, standing up straight look. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of trim off about a half an inch here. I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to grab my add point tool to measure out that half an inch. It's going to be half an inch up from this point. Then from there, I'm going to cut 
And again, you can draft if you're still a little um, unsure about your ability to cut nice lines or draft nice lines or draft it first, change it, alter it so it looks nice, and then cut it. But I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to do a slightly curved line. And I'm going to kind of just blend it in about, you know, to the middle, a little bit past the middle. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is... I still want that even height all the way around, but I want this, this sort of curved up shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this piece and I'm gonna bring it up top right here. Then I'm gonna grab my join pieces tool and sort of glue this piece right on top of uh, the collar piece as is. And again, I want these lines to go together. So I'm gonna take a look at where those green, green lines are attaching. They're not correct, so I'm gonna select change direction now they look good so I say okay and there we are okay first things first I'm gonna correct the grain line remember we're gonna put the center back on grain this part back here is going to be the center back this part here is going to be the center front okay now at this point we can pretty much keep it as is if you want a nice rectangular shape which if we look at the example, is a nice rectangular shape. That's all this is. All we'd have to do is mark that buttonhole. So I'm gonna put that buttonhole there. Um, so again, remember this goes to the edge of the button placket and the center front is the middle of the button placket. So um, what we need to do is we need to find where that center front is. So if I have a two inch button placket, one inch from the edge is going to be my center front. So I'm just going to use the ruler actually for this. So here I'm putting it at negative 19 and I'm going to align it there. And this is at negative 20. So these are one inch apart. So this is representing my center front. And I can drag down another guideline and just sort of try to put it in the middle, just kind of as an eyeball. Um, and then of course we can check with our measure tool just to see if it's sort of in the middle here. It looks like it's, it might be a little bit high, but we'll, we'll check to see. A Little bit high, a little bit high. So I'm just gonna nudge it down. That's probably good. Now what we're going to do to add that button on there is we're not going to use the add several. This is when we use the add button tool because it's only one. Now if you want to put two on the uh, Mandarin color, that's up to you. It's really just a style. Just make sure that your button placket is either high or this your collar is high enough or the button placket width is wide enough or your overlap is wide enough. I'm just going to put it right there and that's just, it's going to be a small little um, uh, two, uh, 0.28 inch radius. So again, that is the distance from the center to the edge. Okay, so now that we have the button, what we can do further is we can kind of shape it a little bit. Now, if you are going to go on and continue to do a two-part collar, I would highly recommend you shape it a little bit. So um, when we look at collars, a two-part collar, and let's look at one. I have the same example we used yesterday because we had a collar. Um, Come on, come on, let me scroll. This guy right here. So, as because it's um, kind of all buttoned up, you can't see it very well. But the collar stand that we're doing is it's actually it's red here, so it looks like um, what they did is they made the collar stand out of two different color fabrics: red on the inside, black on the outside. Because I can see that right here. Because this is area right up here is the collar stand what happens is it kind of curves down here and the little curve the little trim or a little bit of miter right here at the edge it allows this top collar to fall um, a little bit better a little bit more easily and also aids in being able to take it uh, a button and, and unbutton uh, uh, a little bit more easily so let's assume that we're not done we're not going to just going to do a uh, a rectangular uh, Mandarin collar. If we are, this would be totally fine. The only thing I would really change is going ahead and curving these points here just to make it a little bit more fluid. Okay? 
Now, um, let's actually, let's finish this up as if it were just a final, you're just doing a Mandarin collar. Um, I want to add my pattern information. And of course your style number is whatever your style number is. Uh, if you're working with a size eight, of course you're gonna do a size eight. Um, and then, oops, better not spell size wrong. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut to self so remember when I was talking about most collar pieces always have to do with a cut to self, always are a cut to self, this is no different. We're going to cut to self, we actually sort of sandwich these collar stands together, um, either to um, wrap the neckline, well definitely to sort of wrap the neckline, but also to sandwich in that top collar. So it's always um, two layers, uh, and then we're also going to cut to interfacing. Now sometimes people go with just one layer of interfacing, it depends on how stiff your fabric is, how stiff you want your collar. Um, if it's very stiff and you want a very sharp shape, you'll do two layers of interfacing and, and you know, choose an interfacing appropriate to the you know, stiffness that you want and, and the weight of your fabric. If you want it to be a little bit looser, a little bit softer, you can do one layer. Um, but we typically will always have interfacing within our collar pieces. And we'll say okay to that. Now collar pieces are kind of small, so you might want to size it in a little bit. So we'll make that a little bit smaller. And of course we're going to have an on-fold line here, so let's mark that. Changing the degrees to 90 so it aligns nicely with that line there. And we can go ahead. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change, instead of using my arrows, I'm just going to drop it down on my Y here. So right now it's sitting at 31.63 inches. And let's see, let's just drop this down because let's say if I start it here, it'll be at about 33 quarters. There we go. Put our seam allowance on and move on. So everywhere but the uh, on-fold line, as always. And I'm going to do it slightly smaller. So same thing with the other collars that we did. We tend to have a slightly smaller seam allowance um, on our, oops, clockwise, clockwise, on our collar pieces than we do. I'm going to miter them, of course, because we nice, want nice pointy points. And I'm also going to go ahead and so, okay, for now for our just mandarin collar, our rectangular mandarin collar, this is perfectly fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the top here. I'm going to shape it slightly. Now the most common shape would just be to sort of round this corner off, get rid of that excess, um, especially, especially when we go ahead and uh, change it or use it for a two-piece collar. So this would just be a collar stand and not the final collar. And I'm just going to kind of round that shape off. We'll get rid of that little tab. And it looks like it's <laughs> messed up our seam allowance quite a bit. So let's reapply and hope we can smooth that out. Okay, there we go. All right, so now from here, what I can do is I can use this to draft my top collar. And that, of course, is uh, this part that comes down. So this is the top part of the collar stand. And this part that we actually see in a two-piece collar um, is attached at the top here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that, this top here, to draft the top collar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect this piece and go to my drafting. And what I want to do is I want to pretty much copy this top line exactly. So I'm going to use all the points. But of course, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I'm only going to go to 
the center front and I have that marked here with this guideline and also with my button here so that's perfect I'm going to only go to the center front um, and we'll look back at the example because of course um, this is sort of a little overlapped piece so I want when the collar is all um, sort of uh, buttoned up and um, closed I need this top collar to um, sort of meet point to point at the center front so there it is and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down and this sort of shape with the, the rest of this shape here is really up to you um, pretty much it's kind of a triangle a shape it kind of angles down we tend to want to be able to see just enough of that little button but of course if you want to obscure that button a little bit more you can obviously don't bring the line over here because it'll be overlapping unless of course that's something you want but that would be kind of very weird um, uh, typically we angle it out this way a little bit now if you want to curve it or make it scalloped or make it jig jaggedy again that is totally up to you you're the designer collars in themselves are really just sort of style elements they don't really do anything to the garment they're not really functional in any way they're really just there for style but we're going to just do a sort of traditional shirt collar shape I'm going to curve it just slightly and I'm going to sort of bring it down. Now the point usually goes down a little bit lower than the rest of it, but the top collar itself will go down at least a quarter of an inch to about a half an inch lower than this seam right here. And that's because we don't really want to see that bottom neck seam of the collar. And again, I'm going to go back to the example so we can kind of look at this all together. And I want to end sort of right here at the end. And here I want to match the center back pretty much exactly. Because this is going to be on fold too. It's going to have a straight center back on fold line. Yep. So let's just take a look at those elements in play. So here we have, here's that line that we came down. We angled out to kind of create this triangle shape right at the center front. Um, this looks fairly straight. They probably didn't curve it that much, but you can, again, you can curve it if you'd like. Um, if you'd like to, you know, make it jig jaggedy or scallop or even round. Again, up to you. And then again, we made it a little bit longer than, so if this is the width of the uh, collar stand, we don't see that seam going around. We can only see it through the neck hole here. Um, and that's because we made this collar stand a little bit longer. You don't want to make it too much longer or else it starts to bunch up on the chest and the shoulder. But just a little bit longer to obscure that seam. Now we're going to do one other thing to this. This isn't completely done. Um, and it is going to, if we take a look at the example again, maybe it shouldn't but done. This sort of angles out. See how this kind of angles out? So what the collar stand does is it goes straight up from the collar, straight up. But this piece doesn't go straight down. It doesn't go out or anything like that. It goes kind of angled out like this. So this is kind of a little bit wider and, and, and um, has a, a slightly larger sort of circumference than our um, collar stand. So in order to do that, we're going to apply a little bit of slash and spread and just a slight amount of slash and spread. This is not slash and spread to create um, ruffles or anything like that. What we're going to do is I'm going to grab this piece and I'm going to grab, um, you know, maybe pull out some guidelines and I'm going to divide, use the guidelines to divide it in roughly thirds. You know, it doesn't have to be super exact, but roughly even thirds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my scissors and now cut along here. And we're going to go ahead and cut this collar piece into three pieces. And now I'm going to go ahead and do my slash and spread. I'm going to keep the center, black, uh, center back straight. And then these guys I'm going to rotate out so there's a distance of no more than about an eighth of an inch. Again, you want to go for about an eighth of an inch. And it might take a couple kind of little rotations to figure out how many angles that is. So I did about three degrees right there. Let's see what that distance is by measuring it. 
and point one. That's pretty good. So one eighth is uh, point one two five. Um, so you know that's that's pretty good. So let's do the same here. So I rotate it once about three degrees. So let's do like a little bit more than six because it was three point something. So let's try th six point. Oh, I don't know five. And I'm going to put that there. And again, I'll just double check. It looks pretty similar to the other one, so I feel good about it. Even closer. That's probably uh, pretty pretty close to one eighth. Now that we have all of the pieces, what I'm going to do is go ahead and protect them all. And you guessed it, redraft the resulting shape. I forgot to protect the pieces. Sorry about that. It's early in the morning when I'm doing this. <laughs> so let me just try again. I'll be quick about it. Okay. Now we are done. And I have my final piece. All these other little template pieces I can get rid of. Move this out and we'll finish it off. Of course, just like the back, or I'm sorry, just like the collar stand, our grain line is gonna be aligned with our center front. We can name it top collar. Of course, we want, if we have a two-piece collar, we want to make sure that our labeling um, describes the difference. So you wish you should just have collar one or collar two or, God forbid, you know, name them both collar. Um, that would be very confusing. Uh, so again, this is the top collar, so we know that is the one that goes on top. And that, of course, is going to be the collar stand or base collar or, again, if it's just by itself, you can call it mandarin collar or just collar if there's only one piece. Okay, let's add some seam allowance everywhere but the on-fold line on the center back. Again, we're going to do quarter inch all the way around. Now, I forgot to do the miter option, and sometimes you can kind of forget that, but on collars, it's really important to do the miter um, uh, option. Again, getting rid of that extra seam allowance allows these little points and things to be super sharp and super pointy because we don't want that extra... Um, or excess seam allowance in those little corners. It'll make it bunchy and kind of round and you won't get that nice sharp shape that you really are going for. And for the most part, all of our pattern information is gonna be the same as it was before. I forget what I put as a style number, but you guys know all the pattern piece, all the pattern pieces to one garment should have the same style number. You guys know that by now. Um, cut to self. and cut to interfacing. And same rules for interfacing apply to this guy as well. So there we go. Uh, we'll put on our on fold line, of course. Line it up, drop it down. And there we are. We are finished with our collar piece. And let's zoom out and sort of see how it overlays. So you are gonna get a little bit of the diff of a difference here. See how that's gonna kick up a little bit. And again, because we did that, we made this bottom part a little bit wider. So overall, even though this is kicking up, if you took a measurement from here to here, it should be the exact same distance as here to center front, which is about right here. Oh, it's protected. You can't take measurements on a protected piece. That's kind of silly. You should be able to do that. Yeah. 
Exactly. Okay. Um, and again, just that little spreading, again, it's not going to make any ruffles. It's too small. The only reason that we spread it is to kind of get this little bit of an angle so this kind of goes out this way. And again, the um, actual neck seam is really about like right here. So if I was to look underneath or sort of have x-ray vision, the collar stand kind of comes up um, from the neckline sort of right up here. If you look at the very middle of that uh, little grid icon, that's where it is. And then the rest of it kind of angles out and sort of slopes out this way. And it will do that just so long as we slash and spread that edge slightly, okay? So there's our two-piece collar. It's actually surprisingly easy to make and draft. It's um, pretty formulaic and uh, there's not too hard math, not too hard concepts. You just sort of apply it and uh, go on your merry way. Um, so that's our uh, two-piece collar. Uh, so let's take a look a little bit at our sleeves. Now the first sleeve draft that I want to do is just a basic bell sleeve. Now I have a little bit of an example here too. We're going to go to the end. We're going to skip over the poof sleeves. So um, there's a lot of different ways to create bell sleeves. Uh, two main ones. Um, I'm purposefully doing this one because it's different from a lot of the drafts that we've done before. A lot of bell sleeves will simply have the sleeve. They'll have a seam where you want the bell to start. And then all they do is take the rest of the sleeve and apply slash and spread in the exact same way that you would apply slash and spread to create a flounce. So you take that bottom part of the sleeve, you cut it into strips, and you rotate it out. I'm not going to show that because it's, it's, it's really almost exactly like what you do for the flounces. You just do it for the sleeve. So um, I don't think it's that you know uh, important to show it. You just apply everything we did for the little, because it's, imagine it as, as like a little flounce or a little ruffle at the end of a sleeve instead of at the end of a skirt. It's the exact same thing. But this particular, especially, uh, example is different. There is no seam. We have altered the shape of the sleeve without a seam. So we didn't cut out and spread and then keep it as a separate piece. Um, so how do we create this shape correctly? Now, what a lot of people will kind of, and almost accidentally, and not necessarily too wrongly do, is um, what is kind of just take a point and kick it out like this. Now, this is going to give you, this is kind of fine. Um, you can only do it so far um, because if you, bring it out like this, a couple things happen, okay? Um, let's take this as an example. Let's see, at least try to make it even. Now there's my bell sleeve. First of all, this is not so much, so a, a, a real bell sleeve will be fitted, fitted, fitted into a break point and then go out. This has no break point, this pattern. It's just going to be kind of a wide sleeve. It's just going to go out like this. And the second thing that's wrong of it is, let's take some measurements and you can see. So this line basically represents our armpit, okay? So if I measure down from here, it is 16 and uh, 0.13. But if I measure from here, it starts to get longer. So these edges are actually longer than the middle part. So why is that bad? Well, what's going to happen is these sort of edges are going to be longer and this sleeve hem is no longer going to be straight. You're going to have about a half inch down here and a half inch down here and a half inch up here. Um, so we want to avoid that. So this, this is why this method can work, but only to a very small degree. So if I wanted to kick out these sleeves just a wee bit to give it a little bit more ease and a little bit more flow, that's fine because the farther I start to kick it out, the more uh, this this is never going to change, right? This armpit center, this sort of center measurement from armpit down to cuff is never going to change. But the more I kick out these edges, the longer this seam gets. And it really should be the same as that center if I want, again, the same length. Now, if you want 
what you might call like an asymmetrical or a, a, an uneven sleeve hem, you can do that too. But if we start to take it to the extreme, you can see how those measurements will really start to go out of whack. So now this is like almost a full, uh, more than a full three inches longer than our center here. So we don't want to do that. We're going to do it in a slightly different way. Now, um, maybe I'll show you both how to do it too. But let's say, okay, let's say I'm going to make this sleeve specifically because we have an example for it. The break starts at the elbow. We can see that. It's fitted, 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 and then at the elbow it starts to bell out. But it's rather subtle. It's a sort of subtle um, change. It's sort of smooth. It's, it's you know, a very uh, um, minimal, the actual change. It's never very dramatic. Um, so how do we create that? Um, again, we know if we want a very dramatic bell sleeve, a very dramatic um, uh, uh, change we can just cut the sleeve at the elbow and then slash and spread all the bottom keep that as a seam now if you want a dramatic uh, change in your silhouette dramatic change in your sleeve that's the way to go but if you want something a little bit smaller a little bit more subtle and the resulting bells just a little bit smaller not super big maybe not a ton of ruffles in them this is the way you're going to do it and i want to sh again show you this because it's a little bit different than what we've done Okay, so let's take a look at the sleeve before we begin because this is sort of a new territory. Um, and let's uh, just sort of review our proportions and information that we do about our sleeve. So this is a sleeve cap up here. It's really what your shoulder is going to be doing. Uh, it's or going to be doing. It's where your shoulder is going to be sitting. Um, top here, this is always going to align with your shoulder seam. If Again, if you have one, if you don't have a yoke, um, uh, it won't. <laughs> um, on our, I gotta zoom in for this, on our sleeve cap, we have a set of notches. We will always have a set of notches. And um, they will always, usually, usually always, um, have two notches in the sleeve cap. Um, one side will have one notch, and one side will have a double notch that looks like this. Almost always, the front notch indicates the front part of the sleeve. So this is the part that goes from uh, uh, side seam to uh, along the front armhole up to shoulder seam and the double notch is almost always uh, an indication of the back so this would be side seam back armhole up to shoulder seam okay so um, this line indicates basically where our armpit is um, this seam comes together this one here with this one to create the tube that our arm will go through. Now, similar to the skirt, we can divide up the sleeve based on sort of typical bodily proportions. And the sleeve sloper's already kind of, it's got those uh, divisions in there. So if you wanted a short sleeve, I would still keep about, at, I mean, at least an inch or so here um, you want a little something just to create the sleeve. Now you can start to sort of cut it up here and get into uh, cap sleeve territory. Those typically take a, a few other considerations and also don't necessarily always fill the entire armhole. So you usually have to make a facing um, in tandem with them. Maybe we'll do cap sleeves um, a little bit later. But for our short sleeves, again, we don't want to cut it for most, you know, just a typical short sleeve. We're going to want at least, you know, one to two inches below our armpit just to be able to form that tube of a sleeve. Down here at this line, this is our elbow, okay? And um, down here, it's not letting me scroll down anymore, but down here is our wrist, okay? If so you wanted like a three quarter length, just go halfway in between your elbow and the wrist and you get like a three quarter length sleeve. There you go. So those are our sleeve proportions. That's getting a little messy, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete my guidelines. So in this instance, in that bell sleeve, we have the break at the elbow, so I'm gonna cut at the elbow, okay? 
And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to slash and spread as if I were creating just a normal flounce and there is going to be a seam here. The only difference in what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pretty conservative with how much I slash it. I'm sorry, with how much I spread it. I'm just going to do this, I'm just going to say roughly into fourths. It divides into fourths pretty nicely. We want it to be fairly even, so all the pieces should be fairly, fairly even. Now, the grain in this instance is right here. It's always along this center line of the sleeve. So none of these pieces are actually going to sit and stay straight along the grain. Instead, we're going to spread them out around the grain. So what I'm going to do is, here it is, here's that middle part. I'm going to use my rotate piece tool to rotate f away from that center line. And again, I'm just going to do it a little bit. I'm going to keep it very conservative. And that was pretty even fullness on that image, so I'm going to keep it even. I noticed that the first time I did negative 4.2, so I'm just going to double that for this one. Maybe it should be a little bit, I forgot that we're going to do both this way, but uh, so I'm going to rotate that, that just a wee bit more. I'm going to match the points up here. Again, that's going to be pretty important. Again, now you can see I was pretty conservative with my slashing. Oop, let's do a little bit more on that guy. I forgot. I mean, it's an extra about four degrees. And there we are. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. Just make sure that all my points are together. Oh, a little bit of space. Let's clean that up just a wee bit. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to protect and draft, okay? Because remember, this uh, if I wanted to do that, if I wanted to protect, draft, and create this shape, and then keep this as a seam, that's perfectly fine. Again, you'd be like, well, that's exactly what we did with the skirt ruffles. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't want to show it to you, because it's exactly what we did. What I am going to do is I'm now, I'm going to put this on top here, and this should line up fairly okay. Um, if your points, if this is too long, if this is like all the way out here and there's a big sort of gap out here, you may have spread these out a little bit too much. And what I'm gonna do now is now I'm going to protect this entire arrangement and draft it. And that is going to be my final sleeve pattern. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me something very similar to what we were looking at, I'm going to curve this point, most certainly. Very similar to what we saw in that image. It's going to be a very subtle, sort of smooth transition from the fitted sleeve into the bell. Ooh, I made a mistake, but that's okay. I'm going to keep on going. I can fix that later. Oh, I made a couple mistakes. Just can't get my hand off the shift, I guess. Again, if you make a mistake in drafting, it's always easier to continue and just fix them later. So we saw a couple points here I curved that I shouldn't have. So let's just go and 
fix them. There we go. Now last, before I move it out, I want to make sure that the grain is aligned with that center line. And now let's pull it out and see what the finished one looks like. Come on. And there it is. So that would look a lot like something like this. Sort of subtle, flowing, not too dramatic, no seam. Okay. So let's take a look at just fullness and sleeves. And I want to do kind of just a quick example. Oh, come on, come on. And um, I really like this sort of example because it really shows you a lot about slash and spread and how it, how it works to add fullness in different places. So this example, oh, oh no, it's going too far now. Um, shows us how to use slash and spread to put fullness in different areas. So it's, it's doing a little short sleeve, so it's cropped it sort of just how I was saying, a couple inches below that armpit line. And here they did, they, you can see exactly what they did. They slashed it all the way up like this and they spread it at the bottom, keeping the top points together. And since we kept the top points together, there's no fullness up here. Uh, the fullness is down here. Uh, where we spread it out and we can see that what they did what they chose to do is they added that fullness in instead of just keeping it loose and kind of drapey and things like that they shirt it back to the original length which would be you know this measurement here um, they, and they bound it creating a little puff sleeve that's uh, poofed out at the bottom but um, still the same um, sort of fitted uh, or non-full version at the top now what they also did is they extended this a little bit. So this dotted line is um, showing that they added a little bit to the pattern right here in the middle of the sleeve. Now why did they do that? Well, it totally would have worked fine if they didn't, but see how it kind of really poofs, it kind of goes around like that. That little extra fabric gives you that allowance to kind of poof out and get that shape. Um, and we've done that um, in other locations here. So here's an example of fullness at both the top and the bottom. So here they did the same slashing. In fact, the same slashing um, took place on all of these different sleeve patterns. They just spread it in different ways. This way we spread it at the top and the bottom. So uh, what we did is we shirt it back to its original size after it was spread and we get fullness and shirring and poofiness at the top and the bottom. Now, in addition to that, they did the same thing. They added a little bit at the top and they added a little bit at the bottom. Again, that creates this sort of very round, very poofy shape um, uh, to take place instead of just having, you know, kind of shirring. Again, it would work without it. It would just be kind of a little bit flatter, less poofy. And if you're gonna make a poof sleeve, why not make it nice and poofy? So here we are, here's um, uh, another example, the last example where we've isolated the fullness at the top of the sleeve and maintained the same fitted, uh, no fullness at the cuff of the sleeve. So we see that there, and again, we've added a little bit more um, to the actual pattern here. And you can really see that here, it allows that little up, upward poof, that shape right there. So um, let's do at least one of these guys. I don't know if we need to do all three of them. Actually, let's do this one right here because it's, it's different than what we have done because we're doing fullness at both the top and bottom. Usually the examples that we've done will isolate the fullness in either uh, and only one edge. So let's do this one, the full poof. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna boop, 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 go back to our original. Actually, I can just use this because it is a short sleeve, I'm gonna crop it at a couple inches below this point, and I'll use my measurement tool while I cut just to do that. So holding Alt to pop, make it pop up. So there's two for my previous, this will be two for my next. Pretty close. Okay. I don't need this bottom part for right now, and I'm just gonna focus on this guy right here, so let's zoom in on it. There we are. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and slash it. Now they did a lot of slashes and, um, you know, um, for all intents and purposes, more slashes are better. Um, you guys already know I'm kind of lazy, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that many slashes. I'm going to do it, oh, I am going to do one right down the middle, and I'll probably do it into about four slashes. Um, and you might say, Kate, Kate, what's the difference? Well, the more slashes you do, it is, it is better. It allows you to more easily, uh, evenly distribute the fullness. Um, so you, we can see this, they did a full eight pieces. I'm gonna do half of it. Um, and again, if I really wanted this to be absolutely perfect, I'd, I'd probably do a few more, maybe at least six, um, maybe the full eight. It depends. If you want it really, really full, if I wanted to add just a ton of shirring, um, I would do a few more. Um, but again, you know, what I am going to do is I'm going to isolate it in this top area. So we don't want a ton of fullness in these sort of curvy areas. Remember, this is the underarm area. And if you put a lot of fullness in the under, start to put a lot of fullness in the underarm area, it gets really bunchy because, you know, if you think about how your arms go, you just have a bunch of like poofy fabric in your armpit. It's not too comfortable. And they did that too. So um, this whole area, they kept the same. They didn't start their slashing until, until we're, we're well into the cap right here. So they did it right here. And actually, this is important. So what they did here is they even numbered it. So two and three, that's where the shirring is going to be. And you can see that in the illustrations as well. So here's two. And on the other side here, there's a three. So there's only shirring really on the very top of the sleeve. There's none coming down here. And we're gonna do the same thing because no one wants a whole bunch of shirring right in their armpits. And I'm gonna use the um, notches as, as my guide. So I'm not gonna have any shirring or any poofiness in the underside. I'm gonna isolate it just in the top and ah, uh, looks like I am going to do, sorry, I want to make that a little bit more even. Let's put it, it's going to snap to a point. I'll do it down here then. You're not cutting. Why are you not cutting? Okay, there we go. I'll just make sure it's even in here using the proportionate flow. Okay. It's a little weird. Okay, looks like I am going to be cutting into six pieces. So I'm not going to be super lazy. I'm just going to be kind of lazy. <laughs> okay. I think this would be more than enough. I, you know. think that whole dividing into eight pieces is a little overkill, let's face it. Okay, so this is pretty easy. I don't have to rotate because, again, we're, we're spreading both the top and bottom. Huh, there's a little weird thing right there. Let's clean, look at that and clean it up. <laughs> is that the grain line? Huh, <laughs> oh, what's it doing up there? Oh, it doesn't matter uh, because we're going to redraft this anyways. These are just template pieces. The grain got all the way up there. So what I am going to do is I'm going to spread them apart and um, I want to keep it even. Again, that's going to keep our sort of uh, poofiness of the shirring even. So um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm, I, you can use guidelines and the ruler, which are really nice. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five spaces. So I can even sort of plot that out here. So let's say I'm going to add about an inch. Oh, that's two inches. That actually looks pretty good. To each spread. So let's do that there. So that's two inches. So I'm going to do line this guy up here. Ooh, and let's do a one of these so we line up the bottom as well. So we know what, that we're lining it up properly. There we go. OK.
Mm, you want to snap right there? I don't want you to snap right there. I want you to be right here. Oh, come on now. Sometimes OptiTech snap is really annoying. So you might be wondering, well, how do I determine how far I want to spread it? I know that the far, uh, the farther that I spread it when I'm doing, you know, for flounces and ruffles, I get a bigger ruffle. But what do I get here? If I spread it more, do I get more shirring? Well, essentially, yes and no. So uh, I'm not going to get any more shirring in the sense that I have already set the fact that it's going between, let's say, 0.3 and 0.2. Um, I'm not going to get more shirring down here. Um, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get fuller shirring where I do have it. Um, so it's going to be poofier. I'm condensing more fabric. I'm condensing more volume of fabric uh, into a smaller space. Um, so I'm going to get, again, it's going to be poofier. Um, and you might be saying, well, is it, is it ever too much or is it ever not enough? And yes, uh, basically what you want to be looking at, and we can sort of test this by doing some measurements afterwards, um, is for a nice full shirring, uh, general rule of thumb is you want to extend the space that you're shirring, um, you basically want to double that length. So if I have a length of, let's say, five inches that I want to slash and spread to create shirring, that length uh, should go, should be spread to at least about 10 inches. Now that is going to vary with your fabric types. Um, thinner, limper fabrics will need to be spread more um, because they can uh, shrink down and again they're um, just sort of volume oh I got oh, I'm messed up now um, they uh, just uh, they need uh, extra fabric so if you have like something like a chiffon which is very very limp very very thin you want to be looking at extending those lengths by at least two and a half to three times their original length to get a nice full shirring. Now, um, the opposite is true uh, for thicker fabrics. Thicker fabrics have a tougher time being bunched. It has a tougher time uh, being put into a sort of shirring-like situation. So if you want to shirr a thick fabric, you're really going to be looking at max uh, one and a half times the original length. So we're going to test this after I'm done to see how how much shirring I added and we might determine our fabric type based on that. But for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect all these pieces and what I'm going to do now is draft based on them. Now for this first bit, again, we don't really want to change the inner part of the sleeve or the part that goes underneath the armpit. So I'm going to stay real close. And then I'm going to start to kind of hover above this for these parts. And again, that is so we get that nice round poofy shape. And if you want it to be fuller, if you want it to be poofier, you're gonna go ahead and make it even more full or poofy. So you'll extend it up. If you still, if you wanna keep it pretty close to the body, ooh, I made a mistake there, but again, we can fix that later. Again, keeping it very tight right here. And only here, I'm gonna start to bring it down. So we get that same, I'm running out of screen, but you can always fix this a little bit later. I, I'm probably gonna pull that down a little bit more. And we'll even this out. Yeah, this is definitely gonna need some fixing, but let's finish it and fix it. <laughs> 
<laughs> bit of a wonky shape down here. So let's fix that up because that obviously doesn't look very nice. Now it's looking kind of weird and wiggly. So whenever it does that, I tend to like to start to delete points. It tends to uh, smooth it out a little bit better. So why is this one so different? It shouldn't be so different. That's right in the middle. Hmm. Is there any other points I accidentally put in here? Ah, yes, there it is. That guy's hiding. He's ruining the whole show. Okay, that's fine. Um, I can do that because what I can do now is I can just go back and put a point right there and use that and just pull down the middle and I'll get something much smoother and more symmetrical. Okay, we just want to make sure that it is curved on both sides. So let's curve this guy. You, you must be curved. There you are. What? How nice. Okay, that looks good. Um, actually, I might even push this up a little bit. Make it a little bit more even there. There we go. Um, this is looking pretty good here. Let's just fix that corner piece. There we go. You should be a grading on curve. And there we are. Um, of course, what I want to do before I do anything else is I want to make sure that I, I know where the center of the sleeve is. So again, it's going to be right here down the center. Um, let's make sure it's really nice and close there. Um, and I'm going to put a notch right at the top. And um, I'm going to, you know, here, here's about where the double notch for the back is. And actually in Optitex with your notches, you can, um, change let's see the shape of it so this is the t-notch so we can do like a little double v single v don't you have a double v you used to have a double v or i guess i can put another v just right next to it because it, remember the back we want to know what the back is the back is going to have that double notch let's zoom in there so i get that double notch right where i want it let's put one just right next to it there we go Oh, let's get rid of the T-notch. Oh, that is the other notch. So let's make that a V. There we go. Now we got double notches for the back. And let's do a single notch for the front. It was about there. Whatever style notches you do doesn't really matter, just so long as it's clear what is the front and the back. So let's take that out and look at the finished pattern. Come on, come on. There we go. And there it is. Of course, we want to change our grain to go up straight like that. We wouldn't call it draft or anything like that. But again, that is going to be our puffy sleeve. Um, now let's check to see how puffy it is, if it's going to be puffy enough um, or not puffy at all. So the way I'm going to do that is um, I'm going to, so I have where the shirring is going to be. I put the notches there that isolates where the not, um, shirring is going to be. So what I want to do, and it would have been a little bit easier if I had done this before I had slashed, but I'm going to go ahead and measure the original distance and we can do that pretty easily by just rejoining these guys. Let's unprotect them and let's join them back together. And 
So my original distance is 8.22. Okay, great. So what I want is I want about between um, 16 and a half and 20 inches for my finished version. And I can adjust as accordingly. Let's zoom out. I really miss having a scroll wheel to do the zooming on OptiText, that's for sure. So let's measure from here to here. And again, I'm looking for that, you know, between 16 and a half and 20 inches. Perfect. Um, so that looks quite good. We'll have a nice full shirring. Um, again, this would be a little bit too much if this was a very thick fabric, but I don't know why you'd want to do puff sleeve out of thick fabric anyway. Um, but again, that's going to be just fine for our shirring. Um, and uh, uh, what we would do too is we'd have um, subsequent notches on our, or um, you know, matching notches on our center front and center back bodice armholes. Uh, so we know how small this needs to be shrunk down when we shirt it to be able to fit into the armhole once it's finished. And again, that's always really important to do whenever you have shirring. Um, you need to know how much that shirring is going to be shrunk down. And we typically do that with notches. Now I mentioned that um, in the shirring section when we did shirts, uh, sorry, skirts. And I'm gonna probably go over a little bit more of that um, on Thursday too when we look at sort of sort of alternate and fun things uh, and probably add a little bit of shirring uh, into shirts and things like that. But that was our lesson today. We did collar and a little bit of sleeve variations. Um, so hopefully you did, found it helpful. And again, if there's anything you want me to uh, show you guys how to do, um, send a picture, uh, which helps me know, know exactly what it is that you want me to show you. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and, and do a nice little video for you. Um, so I'm going to disconnect and log off.